$30.30. Ouch. Yep, that's what you pay for the Pennsylvania Turnpike, and that wasn't even the whole thing. After our longest trip to date, today we begin the journey home. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be, because I'm free in my RV. For the past few days, I've been staying here, at the Elizabethtown Hershey KOA, attending the Hershey RV show. We even had a meetup on Thursday and my customary live stream on Friday with a special guest. Hello everybody, Red Jaguar is in the house. How's everyone? Oh, hold on, but hold on. Let, let, let me remove the chat here so we can see you. Boom. There you go. And, and the microphone. You just came back from the show. Yes. And I really enjoyed it. it yeah. uh, if I only had enough money. Yeah, it was really cool having Herbie as a guest on the live stream, catching up once again. Well, hello, everybody. Good. Um, it's almost afternoon, actually. It's 11:35, and um, I've been here in the in the central Pennsylvania area for a few days, but we haven't done done any any uh, touristy things because I've been covering the Hershey RV show and. Uh, you probably saw those videos in my channel here months ago, but um, today we're going to do some touristy stuff around the area here in, uh, in central Pennsylvania, namely Lancaster. Let's go to Lancaster. I've heard so many things. Staying here, by the way, at the KOA, Elizabethtown Hershey KOA, which is the, the closest spot I could find to the Hershey RV show. And I skipped breakfast for the reason we're going to eat some Amish food. That's the idea, right? As I said, it was so great seeing Herbie and his wife Mary again, and Mike and Heidi, RV Daydream, and everybody else at the meetup and at the RV show. Really too many to mention here. You know who you are, but there's no video of none of that. I guess what happens in Hershey stays in Hershey. Today, I want to go out and explore the area a little bit, maybe around Lancaster, because tomorrow, Tomorrow we start heading south. A very cute town, Elizabethtown here. It's, it's, it's almost tempting to, to stay here and have lunch here, but... Continue for two miles. Yes, I had great ambitious plans for this area. Centralia, Harrisburg, there's so much to see around here, but I decided to focus on the RV show instead. Today, I'm just gonna settle for the Lancaster area and tomorrow we'll start heading south. Cover bridge. I'm gonna go check it out uh, on my way back. Hey, look, a buggy. Beautiful countryside. Well, the idea is to go to this restaurant called Miller's Smorgasbord. It's like an all-you-can-eat buffet, and that's why I've been fasting all morning. I want to get my money's worth. It seems to be very popular and huge. They've been around for 85 years. Originally, Anna Miller served the chicken and waffles to truckers as her husband repaired their rigs. And eventually, it grew into this much larger and varied offering. I'm gonna start with the ham and bean soup, and yeah, it is pretty crowded at the buffet. Mmm, fried chicken. We'll start with that and some beans, perhaps. That could be a dangerous combination, let me tell you. Here we are, plate number one. Wait, this is fried cabbage, or baked cabbage, the chicken and waffles. Let's cover the Swedish meatballs, and now they have drumsticks, which I like much better. Shrimp salad and, uh, and mushrooms. It's really good. Well, what can I tell you? I really stuffed my face here. It was, it was really good. It's one of the better buffets that I've been to, actually. Um, really good. I like that beef burgundy with mushrooms. That was one of my favorites. And the fried chicken. And, um, and I didn't leave room for dessert, which 
it would have been good since we are in an Amish country, but I was more into the savory stuff. Ah, the soup was really good. That bean and bean and, um, and ham soup and the lima beans and uh, good food, good stuff. The beautiful countryside right here behind the restaurant. What is our destination? Your destination is historic Lancaster walking tour. Well, we may not do the, the walking tour, but it seems like a good location to, to, to start our own walking tour. By the way, what my, what my body really wants is to take a nap right now after, after that, that scrumptious meal, which was, was um, $33 for, for the buffet and um, buffet, no, it's called a, uh, what do they call it? Um, for the buffet and uh, and the, an IPA, I had a Troix uh, IPA because that's the one that they had. Uh, they had a beer flight too, but you know what I don't like about beer flights sometimes is that I already know what I like. So I, I know that half of the beers on the flight I am not gonna like. Although maybe I should be open to to new stuff. Turn right onto US 30 West. So that was uh, Miller's Real Good Food. Continue on US 30 West for four miles. Since 1929, they've been here, apparently. I haven't really done all that much research on this area or Amish country, so I'm just gonna play it by ear and see what we stumble upon. I have no idea what to expect. Check it out, Amish Village. Let's see what it's all about. Lots of people here, and apparently they do like guided tours. It is very much a tourist attraction. This to the left, however, looks much more authentic. Tell you what, I'm just gonna drive around for now, slowly approaching Lancaster. We are Lancaster, not at all what I was expecting, and I think we're lost, just roaming around these residential streets. Let's just say it is much more densely populated than I thought. It definitely has that northeastern big city feel, if there is such a thing. Soldiers and Sailors Monument at the very heart of the city in the historic district. I was gonna walk around, but I changed my mind. I'm just gonna keep driving around to see a little bit of more of the Amish country and then. It is a bustling city. I, I thought it was, I, I was, for some reason, I was expecting more of a small town kind of vibe, but. It is a bustling city, Lancaster. Some beautiful architecture here, actually. It caught me by surprise. It was the state capital for a few years and even the capital of the United States for one day during the Revolutionary War. If you ask me, it almost feels like a mini Philadelphia, kind of, sort of. Check out all these identical little pretty houses. 
it is block after block after block of identical adjacent small two-story houses. All right, let's drive around Amish country a little bit. It is such a beautiful countryside, as I've said before. Rain, rain, go away. Yeah, the weather doesn't always cooperate. Hmm, I wonder how many RVs have bumped into that. Very important to have an RV-specific GPS in this area. Cool! A one-lane covered bridge. <laughs> Check it out! Interesting scooter with a sidecar. Here we are, the famous town of Intercourse. You don't have to stop and take the mandatory selfie, right? Well, yeah. I kind of had to do it, right? It's a thing. Intercourse, Pennsylvania. Here we are. Say, intercourse is happening. The town is happening. A bunch of shops and uh, furniture stores. And Well, we're gonna save something for tomorrow as we start the long trip back home to South Florida. Hello everybody, getting on the road again today actually. It's a beautiful day here in Hershey, Pennsylvania, in Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania to be exact. And um, today we're going south, we're going to Gettysburg and uh, probably Leesburg if, you know, if we have time. Uh, that's the plan anyways, I'm gonna fix me a quick breakfast here and we hit the road. It's been many days here at the RV show, at the Hershey RV show, it's been exhausting, but but very productive, very, um, you know, it's been a good week and I got to spend some time with, with, uh, with Herbie, uh, Red Jaguar and everybody else. We had a meetup at the brewery and, um, and yeah, so much stuff. So I'm gonna make me a, some kind of like a scrambled eggs here with mushrooms and uh, yeah, let's get a nutritious breakfast so we don't have to eat anything else like substantial until this evening. Whoa, there was a little bit of there was a little bit of water in here. But we at the supermarket here, food giant. I guess there's a there's a probably a, a large Puerto Rican community in the area, so I've been able to find stuff like that dry cooking wine that I usually use. You know, you know, Puerto Rican cuisine and Cuban cuisine are somewhat similar. So 
They had a whole aisle of Goya products, you know, like I replenished my refrigerator. So we don't have pretty much enough, um, enough to get me through the rest of the trip. We're going to do some of this, uh, yeah, seasoning. This one has onions, celery, green peppers, and red peppers and parsley. Yeah, that should be good. I just add a little bit. Well, might as well. And we're gonna cook all this while I scramble my eggs. Where are my eggs? Here are my eggs. And I'm gonna do a little bit of spinach, but I'll, I'll add that at the end because, you know, I don't wanna overcook it. I think it's amazing sometimes how hard it is to find certain types of foods uh, around the country. And in most of the, in, in most of the United States, uh, when you go to that aisle called Hispanic foods, most of the time it basically means uh, mostly Mexican food. And, um, and it's hard to find like, uh, you know, Caribbean, you know, Hispanic Caribbean stuff, like, like what you would use in Cuban, uh, Dominican, and uh, Puerto Rican food, which is which are similar cuisines. And even though I love the consistency of always going to Walmart, because you know you, it, everything is laid out more or less the same, and you know and you know where to find stuff. It is also very cool to go to like the local grocery stores, and uh, because you know every even though we are all the same country every area has its little different peculiarities and um, and uniquenesses Un uniquenesses is that a word unique things like i didn't show it on video but there was a, this grocery store in omaha where they, they the register didn't have a conveyor belt you just pulled your car to the register and uh, and the cashier would open up the front the, the, the front of the shopping cart would open up and then she would just grab your, your stuff that was really cool actually I like that approach just mainly because it's different okay no more pepper I'm gonna add uh, actually I'm gonna keep it simple maybe a little basil I haven't used basil in a while Woo! too much basil perhaps at some point for the next trip I'm gonna add uh, an overhead camera here I've been saying that since the beginning of this trip but yeah Usually, the, I, I, this is the dry white cooking wine. The, the one that I buy in Florida is called Golden Cooking Wine, but it's basically the same thing, same flavor. Well, breakfast is ready. Mm. Anyway, check that out. It's almost too much food, but... Um, Breakfast of champions. I hope I'm not leaving anything behind. On the road again. We are leaving. It's been a fun week here at the, at the RV show in Hershey, Pennsylvania. And uh, I mean, you're gonna see this four months after the fact, but I'm sorry that that's some people, you know, were, were hoping to see me on Saturday and I, I, I didn't go to the RV show on Saturday. But we'll be back next year. Maybe we'll be back next year. I don't know. I'm kind of already showed out at this point. I know I'm going to go to the Tampa show uh, in January. Oh, man, it feels heavy. Well, my holding tanks are full and my freshwater tank is full too. So this is the, the heaviest. As heavy as, as heavy as it gets. But not for long because here we are at the dump station and there's a line. In 1,000 feet, turn right onto Turnpike Road. This guy just left. Perfect timing. Hopefully he left it clean. Here we are. Such a beautiful area, even more so on a perfect weather day like today. I'm just gonna drive by Harrisburg real quick, just to see the Capitol building, and then we continue towards Gettysburg. Boy, am I glad I'm only 10 feet tall. Very pretty architecture here. A 
And there we have it, the Pennsylvania State Capitol. It was originally in Philadelphia, then the seat of the government was moved to Lancaster in 1799 and finally here in 1812. It is a pretty impressive building, as most of them are. This one is often called a palace of art because of the many sculptures, murals and stained glass windows. Let's continue towards Gettysburg. I want to visit the battlefield where the decisive Battle of Gettysburg was fought, considered the turning point in the American Civil War. They do have plenty of oversized parking here. Alright, let's see how this works. I am under the, under the impression that it is a huge park, so... You guys have everything. It's forty-five dollars to get everything, and you get a film, a seclorama museum, and the and the battlefield, a bus too, which is very cool. Since we are with the trailer in tow, I have decided to take the bus tour. Let's begin with the museum, since I have to wait for the seclorama presentation and then for the bus tour. Let's go see the cyclorama. They wouldn't let me film during the presentation, which was basically narration over sound effects and projections over this 360-degree painting of the battle, a work by French artist Paul-Dominique Philippotot. It is very well presented as most National Park Service uh, properties are. The only thing, they didn't allow video in there, so I couldn't show it to you, but it was nice. Let's see the rest of the museum and then we'll hop on the bus. It is very well presented, very informative. It is time to get on the bus. It should be about two hours, and then I'm heading down to Lisburg to meet up with Robert and Vicky at Quattro Goombas Brewery and Winery, the Harvest Host's location where we're gonna spend the night. About 100 yards out, looking closely over these cannon right through here. You see her out there? That's Liberty. That's where Lincoln gave the address. The town, very picturesque. I wish we had the time to explore it, but I'm getting anxious to get home. Now, why don't you look to your right? This is the David Wills house. He was setting up the cemetery dedication. So when Lincoln got here by train but on the 18th, he stayed on the second floor. Parser is now into controls there. And those blue shuttles that you saw working through our park, they'll bring in here from the state park out there. Okay? All buildings but two in this square can trace their lineage back to the battle. But they've all been modernized. Left is called posted rail. I want you to look at the horse memorial on your right. 
This is honoring Major General John Reynolds. He is the first corps commander at Gettysburg and the two race feet of his horse means he was killed here. The man who opens the battle for the Union, holding up the block in this road, is standing. This is Cavalry Officer John Buford. I always thought it was kind of strange. The Cavalry Officer is standing and the Infantry Officer is on horse. Let's take a break. And yeah, the whole battlefield is dotted with monuments and statues and memorials. During the two hours plus that the tour lasts, we're gonna get a plethora of information and historical data that would be nearly impossible to convey here. each gun battery. There were four guns to a battery. The black barreled guns are rifled. They had a range of two miles. What we're gonna see here is the North Carolina Monument. Each state that participated in the battle has a monument, so we might see a few more of these. But anyway, what the people in North Carolina wanted to do what you see here wouldn't fit inside that. This one marks the spot where the North Carolina troops began their part in what is known as Pickett's Charge. Essentially, uh, the Union line would hold in the second day fighting. Well, this is when he contrived this plan now known as Pickett's Charge. He put his first Corps commander, Longstreet, in charge of this. Longstreet didn't like this. He didn't want to do this. He didn't want to send men out across the open ground like this. But anyway, he couldn't get Lee to change his mind about it. Robert E. Lee is on his famous mountain traveler. Lee actually had four horses here. He was not riding traveler at Gettysburg. The traveler had thrown this. Here's the Virginia Monument. Lee will die in 1870, a few years right after the war's over. The seven Confederate figures along the base identify uh, different uh, Virginians from different walks of life. This one here belongs to Florida. Hmm, not very ornate. There's President Eisenhower's Gettysburg home and farm, a national historic site as well, and uh, that's another tour we could have taken. But nevertheless, when they got out of the White House, his health was declining. Such a beautiful area here. Let's go for a little hike to Little Round Top. The battle that happened here was one of the most well-known actions at Gettysburg. And the entire war, actually. This would have been General Warren here, overlooking the battlefield. I imagine he had a pretty commanding view. He likes that as high ground better. Sickles will move 10,000 men forward. The right end of his line is on that red barn to the peach orchard at the end of this road, which is two tree lines over. Those rocks down there are known as Devil's Den. The biggest monument, of course, has to belong to Pennsylvania, where the battle happened. Makes sense. tour is running really long, and anybody else would be thrilled with the extra time and information, but we are in a hurry for a change. It is about an hour and a half to Cuatro Goombas, and we have to arrive before they close. We are now in Maryland. Oh no, I think I killed a bug with the GoPro. Really looking forward to seeing Robert. You met him at the San Antonio rally and his wife, Vicky. Now crossing the Potomac into the Commonwealth of Virginia. Welcome to Virginia. Oh, thank you, Google lady. 
Well, here we are, Cuatro Gombas Winery and Brewery. They have a brewery, they have a winery, they have pizza. It's a very nice place and, well, this is not the most attractive site. Beautiful property here, I'm gonna show you right now. So here you go, they have winery, brewery, pizzeria, sandwiches, very nice. And I think we're sitting over here. Very dog friendly place, look at this. What such beautiful, beautiful area here at this late time of the day. And they're about to close, but still. We made it in the nick of time. That's the, the, the winery right there, over there, where they do the wine tastings. And over here, it's actually the actual Cuatro Goombas Brewery. And it looks like the pizza has arrived. Yes, sir. <laughs> Robert and Vicky? Mm, that looks good, man. We hung out outside Minitini, catching up until the sun went down and the mosquitoes came up. Till we meet again, friends. Good morning, this is where I slept. Check out the moon. All right, everybody. Let's get this show on the road here. But we slept really well last night. Here at the Quattro Gombas. I only woke up once in the middle of the night. And that was to, to turn off the fantastic vent and, uh, and close the window because, you know, it got, I want to say chilly. It got down to the low 60s. But you know. That was uh, it was starting to go. It's, it's early actually. It's it's only 8 a.m. today, and this was a very nice stay. I had a I had a great time meeting up once again with Robert, and his, I'm meeting his wife uh, Vicky. We had some pizza. We had some beer. Yeah, we're gonna do Lisburg real quick, and then we go up to. Um, Harper's Ferry, I've always wanted to go to, no, not always, but for a long time I wanted to go to Harper's Ferry because at one point I want to do the Appalachian Trail and uh, that's like the, according to the hikers, that's the psychological midpoint of the of the Appalachian Trail. And they have like a, like a visitor center there and um, yeah. So that's the plan for today and then Shenandoah National Park. I know, it's one of those amb ambitious plans days and hopefully we'll get to do everything. Otherwise, by, 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 by 3 or 4 p.m. We'll, we'll start looking for somewhere to camp, right? On US 15 North toward Here we are, Lisburg, Virginia. Let's stop real quick here at the Safeway. I wonder if I could just park here at the Safeway. It's completely empty. If I could park here for a couple of hours. I actually need to buy some stuff. Well, I asked if I could stay, you know, for about an hour or so while I went to, to the town and just to see it. And they say, sure, okay, no problem. So um, that's what I'm gonna do. So thank you, Safeway. And I also needed some ham and cheese and and salami and stuff like that because I have a lot of bread but nothing to put inside that bread to make me a sandwich if I really need to do like a quick lunch so it's about a half a mile to, to the center of town so that's where we're going Lisburg, by the way, a very historic city founded in 1758 Robert was telling me that from time to time residents will still find artifacts from the Civil War in their backyards which would make sense since the city changed hands several times during the conflict. 
Earlier, during the War of 1812, Lisburg served as a temporary haven for the United States government and its archives, including the Declaration of Independence, the U.S. Constitution, and portraits of early American leaders like Ben Franklin. Well, I've only been here for about 15 minutes and I've seen three breweries, so... Looks like this might be a fun town, uh, you know, at the appropriate time. It's, it's 9 a.m. in the morning. I'm gonna go to the visitor's information uh, center and get a map or something, and then we'll just walk around downtown for about an hour or so. That's all I wanna do here today. I've got the Lowdown County uh, Guide, which is wine country, so we might this is a winery before we leave the area. And then I got a, like a map of downtown, which is not great, actually. I was hoping for, like, for a touristy map with all the historical locations, but... I'll just walk around and I'm sure the, the, the buildings will have like, plaques and stuff, right? Definitely early. She was, she was a little cranky at the beginning, but then she warmed up. Well, I am obviously too early for anything here today. It is barely 9 a.m. But I just want to get a taste of the town for a possible future visit. And so far, it is charming. This is the county courthouse where the town was originally founded. And I'm not going to pretend this is even close to an overview of the town. You know, in my original plan, I wasn't even going to come here. Uh, this is just... Uh, you know, one of those serendipitous things that happened to be in the area. And uh, Robert and Vicky are from around here. And, uh, you know, they say, you know, let's have a, a, a beer at the, at the, at the, at the Goombas uh, Brewery last night. And it's just 10 miles away from here. So I said, let's see this bird while we're here. And uh, I'm just going like, to walk around for about an hour. And then we continue. But, it is one of those places which is probably worth revisiting. But it seems like a, like a cool town. It has a very quaint, nice historic downtown here with a bunch of breweries, which you know, like that, and a couple of nice restaurants. Yeah, definitely very picturesque. Here's once again the courthouse and the post office. And uh, I really wish I could linger, and in theory I could, but it's been such a long trip and I want to get back home. Lisburg is definitely going on that list of places to revisit. Well, Lisburg here definitely going on that list of places to revisit with more time in the future. And you're going to say, Robert, you're just rushing through all these places. And that's true. And um, this is the thing. Lisburg wasn't originally, as I said, wasn't on the plan. And on this, this I, I've been on the road for three and a half months almost now. And some places we've visited more in depth, like some of the national parks. But... Um, some of the places we're visiting on this trip are just, you know, overviews, you know, to, to, to visit at some point in the future. And Lisburg is definitely one of them. This was a pleasant surprise. I'm glad, uh, I'm glad I visited because I wasn't. Um, well, now we're going to go to a place which kind of was on the list. Harper's Ferry. Let's head down there. I mean, isn't this great? Such a hidden gem, such a pleasant surprise, Lisburg here. I mean, let's face it, this is kind of under the radar. Do you mind if I sit next to you real quick here? Thank you. <sighs> On the next one, we continue heading south. We will visit Harper's Ferry at the confluence of the Potomac and the Shenandoah. Then the Skyline Drive and Talula Gorge as we follow the Appalachian Mountains and eventually get to Florida. Oh, thank you, old lady. Here we are. I'm riding 
fighting it. 